Hi friends, welcome to the series of pre-watch videos on the concept of long-lived assets. By now, you have covered a lot of ground and you're almost towards the back end of this course. So congratulations. And uh, if you do this part very well, I can guarantee that most of the ratios that you would be calculating for the balance sheet uh, most of the performance aspect that you will be looking at in case of uh, the income statement, you will have a much better understanding of things. Because as a matter of fact, out of 100 rupees if a business has invested, roughly 70 to 75 goes into the machinery, goes into the furniture, goes into land, goes into intangible assets. All these are examples of long-lived assets. As a trainer, I sometimes feel that it's easier to talk about things towards the fag end of the course for a very simple reason that you have already spoken about some of these things. In fact, many of these things in the initial concepts. So I recall doing a case of Baron Coburg with you, wherein the Lord Baron Coburg had given few resources uh, the assets to both the farmers, Ivan and Frederick. In that case, there was something given which was known with the name Ox. And while we did the accounting for Ox, you know, we didn't tell you that we were doing the accounting for Ox, but actually it was a long lived asset that we were doing the accounting for. We had the few issues that we actually have already dealt with. First is the capitalization. What is the value at which you have to recognize the asset in your books on the first day? Congratulations, you already know that because you've done inventory and in that you've done the concept of landed cost. You can apply the same concept here. The second concept is of how would the value of ox move in your books? Will the value of ox come down? Um, will the ox become old? Will the efficiency level go down? Answer is in most cases, yes. That falling value is called as the amortized cost. Congratulations, you've done that as well in the concept of balance sheet. Is that historical cost, amortized cost, and four other valuation bases. So amortized cost is also known. And the fall in the value every year is called as depreciation. That's most easily understood even by non-commerce student. So that's the second concept in the long-lived asset. The third aspect is the impairment. Remember in the Baron Coburg, the flow of Ivan was broken beyond repair and the total consumption by Ivan uh, was broken down into, was divided between the usage and the breakage. That breakage part is something which is called as the impairment loss. What happens when out of an accident, suddenly the value of the asset falls down. That's where we talk about impairment. The fourth aspect is would the asset this is the aspect we haven't spoken about as yet. The fourth aspect is one day your long lived assets will be sold. What will happen on the day of sale? We have spoken about what will happen on the day of purchase. That's the capitalization, the first point. But the fourth point is what will happen when you sell your old mobile phone, when I sell these, you know, old laptop, you know, and things like those. The fifth uh, concept and you know fifth and six are almost together that we got to do is the concept the new age accounting models so that's really towards the end we are going to talk about the revaluation model and the fair value model and we are going to look at them only if the time permits only if the intensity uh, you know uh, you, you're able to catch up till then because that's really the icing on the cake so I'm absolutely okay even if you don't look at the revaluation model and fair value model in as much detail uh, and also it's a matter of which program are you part of in a normal PGDM full fledged 30 or 40 you know hour course that of course you know this is one of the areas so so that's you know overall paradigm under which we are going to talk about this something called as a long lived asset. So in this particular video, I'm going to cover the basic part and the first point of capitalization. Good news again, and I'm so happy about that, that you already know how is a long lived asset different than inventory because we have done that well in while we were doing the inventory. I'm going to make you recall the, the basic definition of inventory. So, so at that time, if you recall, we, we said inventory is the 
is the tangible input to the production process something that a business buys regularly primarily for the purpose of making money by selling it so the primary objective with which i as a businessman look at my finished goods is to make money by selling those goods okay but the same business when they buy something called as machinery when they buy something called as furniture when they buy something called as an it equipment or a server uh, you know or they develop a website the primary purpose is really not to make money by making a sale although at that moment on the day of purchase itself they know that one day after 10 years 5 years they will have to sell it but that's not the primary purpose in a very good household example is you go and buy a honda or a toyota car and these two brands are famous for having a wonderful resale value so the showroom manager or the salesman will uh, quietly put that into your head that sir after 5 years once you want to upgrade you are going to get the wonderful uh, you know um, the resale value but you know here is my point of divergence with that sales manager it's good that you kind of you know put that uh, point uh, you know to in the minds of the consumer but selling it at a good value is not the primary reason with which the consumer is buying the car right now the consumer is buying the car for a b c d 4 5 10 reasons selling of the car tomorrow is a secondary reason so mr salesman you have to be little careful about putting this into the mind of the head that's really the secondary part i don't buy my machinery primarily to make money by selling them i buy them primarily to uh, use them in the business and in the process make money so the primary objective that which i bought this laptop is to use them for the classes you bought mobile phone not to make money uh, by selling it although eventually that might happen but that's not your primary objective so again again keep coming back to that primary thing the next thing to note about this long lived asset let me share the screen with you is uh, something uh, a categorization your long lived assets can be categorized into tangible and intangible okay by tangible and intangible it simply uh, means that can you touch it or you cannot touch it so we have spoken about that you know there are multiple intangibles there you have your patents you have your trademarks you have your copyrights you have your goodwill goodwill is one of the very very famous and least understood intangible asset and you know this is not a video to talk about goodwill in detail perhaps you know some other day so these are all the assets which are going to be used for you know longer time the benefit is going to come back beyond a year that's the basic definition of a long term asset and that's how a long term asset gets differentiated from a current or a short term asset and thanks to the wonderful principle of going concern because of which i was able to differentiate between the long term and short term so the fact that you can call something a long term asset is only because of going concern because you are making an assumption that there will be a long term in your life right so that's on tangible and when an tangible like that you know long term assets are very very simple you have furniture machine we have spoken about that many times the second categorization uh, which is equally important is the categorization of having a definite life or an indefinite life and by definite life i mean a uh, it could be any number but it's a fixed number of course can that change um, of course you can and we will talk about what will happen if I thought my mobile is going to run for three years, but mobile became old in two years itself. So what do you do? So the point is that change in life can certainly happen, but the point is whether it is three or whether it is two, you always had that clarity in mind. Okay, can it change? Uh, absolutely, it can. Uh, can a, a three-year originally estimated life become five? Absolutely. If your maintenance of the machinery is fantastic, you can definitely have a, a, an asset working for longer than what you thought. the so definitive means there is a number which you can estimate in case of indefinite i don't know i don't know the life really so uh, a few examples here really are goodwill and the piece of land i really don't know the life of these two and that's the reason uh, it will have an implication when i'm going to talk about something called as depreciation we spoke about that if you remember in the case of ivan and frederick case as well baron cobo we said although ox the consumption value of ox the 4 rupees if you know if i can recall the number right 
four rupees four bushels of wheat in fact will go to the income statement but the land will not go into income statement because i was not able to calculate the per annum usage value to calculate the per annum usage value i need to divide it with the life and if i don't know the life or the life is too big a number then the per annum usage cost is going to be zero that makes land as non depreciable or amortization you know in case of uh, good will right um allow me to come to something called as capitalization um, i hope that the basics are clear um, just whenever you get confused about long lead assets think about your mobile in your context so think about a machinery uh, that's the reason why i gave you this you know kind of a backdrop to think about that this is not invented of course yes you're right for bhl a power plant may be an invented because that's what they do that's what they sell so to fix the anchor point who you are who that business is that's very very critical okay uh, for a normal business buying a piece of land is a long lived asset but for a real estate player like dlf that again is part of inventory so i hope that clarity you know you certainly have i'm going to talk about something called as capitalization and again um, like i said this is something you have done before and therefore i'm 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 happy i'm happy about that fact um the capitalization formally is the exercise to bring an asset on board what's the first value at which the asset enters your books books as in the balance sheet because it's an asset all asset liability capital goes to the balance sheet so the simple answer is sir cash down whenever we make a purchase cash down and the machinery goes up okay that's the very simple reason in inventory we just kind of made it a little more finer by saying that i will not only include the purchase price in this i would also include the purchase related other expenses such as incidental taxes such as transportation so just extrapolate the same concept here exactly the same concept here which basically means that i would while bringing my machinery to my factory continue to add the expenditure till the point my machinery is ready to use in case of inventory that cut off was the inventory is ready for sale look at the primary purpose getting into action in case of inventory i would continue to add the value uh, to the my finished goods till the time my finished goods were ready for sale in case of machinery i will continue to add the value till the time my machinery or any fixed asset is ready for usage uh, so is there a scope of manipulation a little bit yes in our live classes we're going to talk about few examples where in largely it's logical huh? uh, so that way you will get a lot of clarity but at a couple of places you might get a feeling that as a business this is not something which is necessary to make the asset ready for usage i'm going to give you an example i bought a, a I, i bought a car okay let's assume i bought a car uh, and i added alloy wheels onto it according to me alloy wheels are absolutely mandatory you know that's me as a business another friend of mine bought a car same car on the same day at the same price and didn't put alloy wheels or actually put the alloy wheels just out of some fancy uh, women back in call that means both of us have the same cash outflow but according to him alloy wheels are not mandatory for making the car ready for usage or a stereo is not mandatory to make the car ready for usage car is need of mobility what is a stereo doing stereo is not adding anything in the journey of mobility but according to some other business let's say me the alloy wheels and the stereo system and the woofer and the amps all these things are important to give me that mobility experience you can't challenge me as a business because that's what in the beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder it's the beholders right so as an owner of the asset i am free to call that what is the condition in which i would want to use the asset that's the point where an auditor or an external stakeholder can't challenge the business so me and my friend these are the two business buying the same asset on the same day spending same amount of cash but capitalizing the asset at different value my friend will capitalize only the basic car and cash down for stereo expense p and l goes down for me 
that cash down for stereo will add the value of asset. So you see that the value of assets in both the books are going to be very different. And therefore, future implications of depreciation are going to be different. The current year's profit are going to be different. My friend charged entire stereo in the P&L, in the current year itself. So his P&L went down. My P&L didn't go down because I added that value. So these are the two setoffs that you'll have to do. Whether to add some kharcha to the value of the asset and increase the value of the asset or to take it to the P&L uh, and you know, charge it against the current year's income. Keep the balance sheet asset light is the country. Okay, so in the live class, I'm, I'm all geared up to meet you on this concept. Thanks very much for watching this. Mm, uh, you know, more concepts to come, but you know, let's take it one piece at a time. Okay, I'll see you very soon.